Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of The Hand of Merlin. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today as we choose between a level 3 thing over there, or whatever that means, or a corrupted node. I don't like corrupted stuff, let's go with the uncorrupted stuff right here. You have come to the Chapel Perilous, that's capital C, capital P, built long ago by the sorceress Helawes to entrap Lancelot. It is overgrown in a part of its roof has collapsed, but Merlin senses that some of her power still lingers within. Let's proceed towards the chapel. An archway with an ancient wooden door leads into the chapel. The door is inlaid with silver runes, and words in an ancient tongue have been carved into the stone above. We're going to pass through the archway because we can't read. I... Uh, those were the choices. We can pause the video. I can't. But uh, you can pause the video to see what the choices were. I'm going to go with this one because I, I like that. The central chamber. A beautiful shard. Hmm. When you step through the archway into the chapel, the world outside slips away. You can no longer hear the wind or the birds. It is as if you were deep underground. Within, you find a large chamber with walls of steel. In its center, there is a pedestal of purest glass. And at its back, there is a cracked mirror in which shadows and lights move in impossible ways. Is this what Lancelot found when he entered? You sense that you cannot remain here for long. I'm going to examine the pedestal. Trapped within the pedestal, you see a dark cloud, riddled with lightning. This power can be harnessed by the grail. And we gain mana, used for casting powerful spells. I will absorb that mana. Having used the grail to refresh Merlin's power, you sense that you must leave as quickly as possible, or risk becoming trapped in the chapel, perilous. That's capital C, capital P. You are relieved to hear birdsong when you step outside. For a moment, you had feared you might no longer be on Earth. So, I don't know what these symbols mean. Because I, can, I, I can't, like, even hover over, like, I can't keep that selected. Ooh, you can drag and uh, click, click and drag to uh, to get things. We did get ourselves, so, yeah, there's going to be corrupted stuff up ahead. Let's go for a regular node here. You are traveling past a small hamlet when you notice an old man who has been sitting on a rock by the wayside. His beard is long and unkempt, and he is wearing robes that are faded and patched, but look as though they were once well made. A sign rests on his perch. Written on it, in shaky handwriting, is Monedorix the Magnificent. Try your luck in wisdom against the wisest of the wise, is written in there. Uh, yeah, uh, Monedorix, the Magnificent. Let's approach him. The man gets up as you come closer. Ah, I see you are eager for a challenge of your intellect. The Tournament of Wits. His accent is of Parmeni. Par Parmeni, potentially? But you are not certain it is real. I have no idea. I don't... I'm terrible at accents, for one, and also... I have no idea. It is rare that one is so brave as to dare to match their mind against that of Monodorix, the Magnificent. He regards you hotly. Though I must warn you, this is a challenge of brain rather than brawn, and I fear you might be better suited to the latter. I am going to ask why I should play, even though I will agree to play. Monodorix hangs his head in sadness. Ah, yes. It is, sad. it is a sad day and age when a battle of wits requires a reward beyond the satisfaction of the knowledge gained. Very well, if you win, I have some gold coin that must serve as a price. I'm going to ask what happens if I lose. Then Monodorix the Magnificent will continue to reign unchallenged as the wisest in all land. That is all that I need from you. Okay, let's play. I couldn't actually refuse. Let the challenge begin! Mondadorix takes a deep breath and closes his eyes. What? His eyes fly open dramatically as he raises his hands. Flies without wings. Uh, time? Easily? Wind doesn't quite fly. Also, leaves, leaves sort of do. Let's go with time because it is the old timey no pun intended. Uh, the old-timey answer for all these things. It's the time, it's the egg, it's the nothing. Time, yes. 
the one adversary that will defeat us all in the end. He glances at you from underneath bushy brows and you feel strange, as if he sees more than he should. Although perhaps that is untrue of some of you. But now for your next question. What is only one color, but not one size? Present, uh, no, present in the sun, but not in rain, that you can see, but cannot touch. I will say a shadow. Did I? <laughs> Did I mention shadow before in my in my list of of um, common answer for this? I think so. So, it's only one color, but not one size. Present in summer, not in rain. You cannot you can't see, but cannot touch. Yeah, that's the shadow. Ah, see that I finally found a worthy ad uh, challenger. He rubs his withered hands in glee. There might be hope for this world still, but first. Let us see how you fare on the last riddle. What is it that, given one, you'll have either two or none? I... <laughs> a choice is a really interesting one. I like that. Because if you're given a choice, you'll have two choices because you were given a choice before already. Or you'll have no choice because you're given just the one choice. Although a pair of hands... If you're given a pair of hands... That pair of hands is really cool as well. If you're given a pair of hands... Then you'll have a pair. No, you'll have no... Yeah... Yeah, and the pair of hands doesn't work. It's a choice. Three little riddles you have faced, and three right answers I have received. My defeat should grieve me, but instead I am jubilant that you are indeed the champions that this realm needs. Monodorix murmurs. Here, he hands you a coin purse. You have earned this reward, and I give it gladly. Luck be with you. And I take 70 gold for our trouble. Mmm, I love it. I love it. Rumor has it that fiends haunt the graveyard near the old abbey. Some say it is because a false Christian man was buried there, while others claim the abbot had dealings with the devil, and the fiends are the devil's tax collectors, come to get the devil's share. But you suspect that the forces of the cataclysm are at work, and Merlin requires that they be destroyed. We're going to investigate the graveyard, naturally. There is no doubt about it. The veal has been torn and the abominations of the cataclysm have crawled into our world. This place of rest has been desecrated and the diseased, ener diseased energies of the outer realms are pouring in. You can feel the disgust in Merlin's mind as he urges you forward to battle. Are we going to fight corrupted creatures? Because I don't know very well what any of that means. This skirmish introduces abominations. They are tougher and meaner than meaner mortals, so stay sharp. Each abom it's fine, it's turn based. We're we're good. Uh, each abomination has uh, also has unique passive status effects. Be sure to hover over their portraits to learn about them. I don't even I can't even see Oh, they're over there. That's not an abomination. That is that is not. What is that? Oh, it's the portraits. So right, we are facing a wyvern, a mandrake, Two Mandrakes and a Red Cap. Watchful One, gaining out of turn action and reset cooldowns when dealt health damage, expires losing all stacks after applying this effect, does not decay. The Mandrakes look ho just awful, it's just terrible creatures of death. And the Wyvern here, take no damage from ground effects, does not decay. Huh, okay, well, so we don't have any status effects on us. The, the status effects here are just. They're, they're, well, they're not status effects yet, but they will be. They are their abilities at the moment. Okay, so I can't click on them, right click on them, or do anything to really see their range. Uh, I, al although I can see their speed. Evasion 0, speed 4, speed 5, speed 5, speed 4. And we all have speed 5 except for Merwin over here. That is reasonable. The Wyvern there looks more like a freaking... I don't... I don't like that. I, I mm, don't appreciate the wyvern. So I can't shoot from here. And moving in 
is not going to get me anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over here. And I'm going to, let's see, quick draw. That's still damage to extra people. And uh, Archer's Vigil. That is something. I'm probably going to get you over there. We got the Corrosive Concoction. I do want you sort of close to the enemy. But maybe not too close. Oh, there was... Did you see... Yeah, you're going to stay there. Do you see how there was a... What was that? It was like a... Oh, there it is. Do you see that? Oh, that's the... Uh, right, that's the red line that the tutorial showed before. Right. I want this red line then. Yeah, you're going to waste over all of your action points doing that. It's fine enough with me. And we're just going to move over here. I don't know that they have ranged attacks. Watched for. That's... Uh, it's pretty bad. Hmm. So the watch deals 50% less damage to red cap decays, losing one stack per turn. And it's four stacks, which means it's red cap specifically. And red cap is just that one over there, which is a bit of a bummer. Now, this guy is the real bummer here. Uh, and, uh... So, how does that work? Corrosive... Oh, corrosive. That is... That, that works. That's what that does. So, I would want to attack you there. I will move you right here. And I'll do this. And it works on both of them. It's six damage to each. It's not bad at all. And the wyvern... Uh, the wyvern is a, an issue. But it isn't the worst thing. We also have a parry... So, I don't want to attack the Red Cap right away. I want to attack the Mandrake. I would say. Let's see if we can tell if they're ranged attackers or not. We have Bower. Yeah, I don't. I can't quite tell. I don't think... Maybe it shows up if they are? It doesn't show up over here, so... I don't know. Uh, let's send you over here. Because I do need to move. And I will do... Not a parry. We'll do a slash. Honestly, I should do a bash. Get you out of the way. And then you... Did you not shoot? You didn't shoot. We do have the quick draw. You can't shoot at close range, though. And I don't know if there's uh, attacks of opportunity. I... I would say yes, there are. Hmm. I'm gonna move her back here. There are not! That is good. And that means... Oh, it, it means we don't have range. Uh, that's also relatively good. It isn't ideal, but it does allow us to reposition to a place here. And let's see what the Wyvern does. The Wyvern didn't do anything. That's six armor damage. Archer's Vigil? Okay, so they... No, oh, that's a ranged attack over there. So that's actually a problem. I shouldn't have bashed that guy. That's a huge problem. That's what that is. Vulnerable 2. Yeah. So, you're gonna need salts. And even then, I don't know what's gonna happen here. So, you can't shoot from there. No. So, we're gonna move right here. The problem is... I need 1, 2, 3, 4, I think. For movement. Which means 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, I, it says 100% there. That's all I need. So that guy needs to die. I might even be able to shoot twice. Uh, that red cap. What's the health like right now? What's that little health? That's him? That's him. Yes. That's a bad bad thing. Uh, okay, so are we going to attack the red cap? No, we're going to attack the mandrake. Yeah. And then you are going to do a singe potentially on the red cap although uh, yeah let's let's do a, a singe on the red cap here and then you have parry which I will do and I will move you over here even though I will get shot or zero I'm not 100% sure how the parry works it might just make us immune it might be stacks or something Elusive jump, that's what that did before. Okay. So now we'll have my uh, AoE attack. Archer's visual is a bit of an issue. Okay. Hmm. AoE attack doesn't seem to be 
working out too well. You still have the red cap thing, don't you? Yeah, uh, 50%, yeah, we, we're gonna need to. I'm not 100% sure how this is gonna go, honestly. It's looking pretty grim. It's looking pretty grim, so... Minus 5 health there. Uh, in a quick draw, he's probably not gonna work. I could attack you here for 100. And, uh... The quick draw here... Does a little bit of damage. Then you have the corrosive thing. Which, honestly, I kinda wanna use, but at the moment it's looking... It's looking like it's not gonna work. Uh... Curiously enough, let's see what the range is on this. So, one, two, one, one. No, wait. Let's see. One, two, one, one, one. Yeah, I need to move, like, really deep, and even then, I don't know that this is... Let's see. One, two, one, one, one. Oh, I need to go there, so I will get hit. So, if I need to go there, I might as well go here. We lost Morgan. Okay. Don't underestimate... Do you still have the parry? No, you don't. So I couldn't have gotten past that if I wanted to. Which I did want to. Hmm. Yeah, we're gonna lose. I mean, this is, um... I think it's pretty obvious at the moment. And in fact, it might have been pretty obvious before. Vulnerable plus two. Okay, so we can attack the red cap at last. For four damage. Dang it. <laughs> my health isn't... It's my health. It's not the red cap's health. Oh, uh, no. Okay. Well, I might be able to kill somebody, but I doubt it. Let's attack you here. All things considered, I did not play well. But... I wouldn't have. This wouldn't have been possible, I don't think. The elusive jump is a very, very good strategy. Knowing now that that guy's ranged attack is also pretty important. And she's down. You were defeated by the enemy. And we lost all the heroes. Look at all how bloody they are. Hold space to fast forward. Oh. Your world is lost, doomed to be consumed by the cataclysm. You feel Merlin's spirit abandoning you, seeking out other worlds. This is your end, but his struggle continues. Your journey failed in Albion after seven jumps and two battles. Your warband was rank two. You started with Brunor, Meadowen, and Morgan lost them all, acquired 250 gold, 25 supply. It, it went well. I think it was good. During your travels, you defeated a, a few people. I don't think we killed a single enemy in that group, honestly. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we didn't. Uh, but, yeah, that's uh, that's that. Let's start a new... No. Let's not start a new game. I don't actually fully know what we're doing here. So these are just repeatable? We just... Okay. If that's the hero inspection. We can learn about them. And then we have the core inspection, which I think is the permanent progression. Yes, yes it is. But we didn't get essence. Cores. So you can change the core. Oh, you probably can unlock new people. Maybe. And then we start a... We have pass runs. Hmm, okay. And then we start a new game. I think that's that's how it goes. Let's go... Let's go with easy. Because it. I don't know if it has a... If there's a... A reason to go with normal at the moment. So we can't do anything here. And we select the same heroes as before. Double click works. Lovely. Start the game. And let's see what it is like to start a new run. After many days of travel, you have arrived at Camelot. Before you lies the heart of Albion, King Arthur's dream made manifest. Here you'll find the Grail, and we click there. Much of Camelot's beauty remains undiminished, for there is nothing King Gawain treasures more than Arthur's legacy. But though it is preserved, Camelot does not feel entirely alive. The strength and vitality of former days is gone, and the round table stands unsteadily. Yet it does stand, and Arthur's dream is not extinguished. We're going to request an audience with the king. King Gawain's hair turned grey long ago, but his grip is strong as he embraces you one by one. 
You have come for the Grail, yes? I knew one day it would be needed. As Merlin told us, I feel his spirit within you, as I felt it within myself a long time ago. Yet he seems diminished, he shrugs. I suppose we all are these days. I have done my best to preserve Arthur's, Arthur's vision, but I am no Arthur. Gawain keeps the Grail inside a simple wooden box engraved only with the sigil of Arthur. Did you know the Grail changes its aspect according to those who carry? It was different when I held it, when Arthur held it. Or then, when uh, Arthur held it. I suppose that means I could never truly follow Arthur's path. path. Though, I've tried. Tell me, my friends, what virtues is it that you embrace? And uh, I think we didn't we didn't use the Grail one single time. And I should have, honestly, but uh, yeah, that, that actually might have been, should have been a thing. I didn't do a good enough job. But now I know the how to yeah minus two damage from attacks that's uh yeah probably want that fortitude when you take the grail its appearance changes as gawain predicted he smiles remarkable is it not to witness such things helps one maintain one's faith that there are greater powers than our own and not all of them are hostile to our needs but then a sudden weakness seems to overcome gawain he leans on the throne his skin pale the king's steward appears and quickly ushers you out of the throne room I'm very sorry, the steward says. The king does not intend to be rude. These spells have afflicted him since the death of Gingaline, and he must rest. He has asked me to help you, however, so I shall do what I can. I can offer you one of two boons, this relic, which uh, bears ancient powers, or the last remaining draught of a concoction once brewed by Morgana Le Fay, when she and Merlin were allies. Uh, so, take the medicine, or I gain Periapt of Resilience. If unarmored, take minus two damage from all sources. Uh, that's interesting. Let's take the medicine. The steward nods and has the strange concoction brought to you in a silver cup. Which of you shall drink it? Uh, this is for extra health restored after taking damage to health. On turn start. Imbibe the concoction. Expires losing all stacks after applying this effect. So it's the next... Uh, well, it's going to be the Bra Braithor? Br Br Brunor, that's the one. Brunor drains the cup. It takes a cold snow and bitter ha ash. Or it tastes of cold snow and bitter ash. Evoking memories of places that do not exist. I am told it will cause your wounds to heal for a time, the steward says. I hope it will help you. The journey before you is long, and there's trouble brewing at Corbinic. Or Corbinic, yeah. Uh, let's begin the journey then. Let's go. So we don't have a choice right away. Straightforward. Late in the day, after spending the whole day following a winding path through the hills, you finally find a, a good place to make camp. And uh, we can all talk around the fire. Let's uh, have um, Morgan do that. Morgan warms his hands on the fire. There was a time at Camelot when we were a family. In the early days before Merlin vanished, before there were so many nights I could barely remember all their names. Our goals were so pure then, our friendship so deep. Perhaps we could really have built the kingdom that Merlin envisioned, he sighs, staring at the stars. Suddenly, an arrow flies past you, striking a rock near the fire. You are under attack! Right away? Well, let's try to min-max. We're playing on easy, though. Uh, but let's try to min-max the... Uh, hmm. The game is a little bit chuggy right now. Let's see if I can fix that. Nope. I don't believe I can. I don't fully understand why it is like this. It doesn't matter. We're fighting four of them. It's a bit of a problem. So we have a looter. We have a brawler. We have ruffians and robbers. They do seem to be all ranged or uh, melee combatants. And uh, we seem to be in a good position here to just tank for them. 28 health? Wait, does our... Do our... Can we... Do we <laughs> I don't even know what's going on. Do we maintain... Yeah, you're, you're going to stay there. Do we maintain the level ups? I wonder. She, let's see, mm, I can't press J or anything from here, so I'm just gonna reposition, get ourselves ready for what's to come, and the turn, yes please, yeah, there's gotta be like, some sort of very highly detailed things in here that makes the game chug for some reason, 
Because over here, it's it's a lot better. Okay, so these guys are coming. I expect them... Yeah, we don't have the parry now. So I think we're going to fall back. It's probably the better choice, since we have a shot. A little bit of damage. They don't have archers. I do wonder if it's possible. I wish you could you could zoom in, because... Oh, you can! You can zoom in. You just can't zoom in in the... Oh, you can't do it all that much, but still. Uh, you can't zoom in in the open world. That guy has an arrow, though. I don't like... I don't like that. Or a bow. He has a bow. He's gonna shoot. He didn't! Oh, that was smart. That was good. I think. Okay. Also, I wonder if this thing has charges. Passive effect. He's granted one stack of bearer of fortitude. When is it? As a passive effect? Really? Oh, that's much better than I thought it was. It's great. It's great. It's absolutely fantastic. Let's go. So, um, you guys, honestly, I kind of want to mess with you here. So I will do that. And uh, we're just going to slash you. It's four damage. It's not that much. And then we don't have... Uh, hmm. That isn't great. We don't have line of sight. That is not great. And we don't have cover either. Hmm. I could use that, but it's a bit of a risky... A risky maneuver. Although it is risky, whatever we do. Let's try and get you. And I'm going to focus on you a little. Can't do anything from here. Can do something from here. Singe. Lovely. Sprint, extra evasion, shot on Morgan. A stand ready for a one. That's minus two armor damage. This guy is sprinting, so we probably get more action points to move and all that. Stand ready allows reactions. Striking an enemy in melee that moves or attacks. It expires uh, after the turn start. So not a big deal. Certainly not a big deal. We have a couple of hits here. I'll attack you a couple of times. Wait, really? You you attack immediately? Well, I suppose that's all right. That's that's fine. We have some shots over there, and I kind of want to do that. You can't shoot from there now. No. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of evasion in there. Well, in that case, I'm just gonna shoot that other guy, because I can. I think. I mean, I definitely can. The point is, I think I'm gonna shoot that other guy, because he might not be. Might not be the best decision, but he will die. I'm trying to spread the armor damage a little. So that's a kill, second kill. Yeah, the evasion has been lost. That's minus evasion. It's a slash for three, and that guy moves. So the sprint is still applied. Curious. So move in. Oh yeah, he's toast. Hello. Admittedly, melee doesn't do that much damage. And, uh... I also notice, uh, so Merlin probably is not going to be able to do much. That's not true. Merlin can definitely do much. Uh, I also, what I was going to say is, I also notice that uh, we didn't get the armory thing uh, in this in this event. So it must have been like the ran it's randomized. All the dialogues and and stuff were were randomized as well, or were different. Okay, not really what I was expecting, but that's a kill. And then you waste your turn moving. I'll just move over here because I can attack diagonally. And I'll hit you once. And then I'll hit you twice. And we didn't lose anything. Victory. 57 coin and 15 renown, I think it was. And the end of the episode as well, because we're out of time for the day. So for right now, I'm Critical RPG, and this has been The Hand of Merlin. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video, but above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.